Bertie, have you seen Uncle Mort? He's upstairs getting ready to go to the county fair. He even got him a new suit, binoculars, and a cane. Oh, brother, what a character. Tonight, in the fourth of a new fall and winter series of Wednesday evening broadcasts, the Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and all those other wonderful Kraft quality foods. Next time you buy margarine, learn for yourself why so many people prefer parquet margarine to any other. Actually, there's just one big reason. Millions prefer parquet margarine to any other spread because it tastes so good. And it tastes so good because it's always fresh. If you live where colored margarine is sold... Get yellow parquet in its new Flavor Saver package. Each golden quarter pound is separately wrapped in new Flavor Saver aluminum foil to keep freshness and flavor in, staleness and odor out. Elsewhere, get parquet in the convenient color quick bag or the regular package. In any package, it's the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. Get some tomorrow. The lights are bright in Summerfield tonight. Crowds are on the streets. Tomorrow's the big day. It's County Fair. Out at the great Gildersleeve's house, the water commissioner isn't waiting till tomorrow morning to fit himself out for the fair. He's dressing tonight. Yes, sir. Spent $35 for this suit. And by George, it's worth it. When I go to the fair, I'm representing the city water. I got to sparkle. I wish I had a full-length mirror so I could see the pants. Are you in your room, Uncle? Yes, come in, Marjorie. I'm trying on my new suit. Not bad, huh? Oh, that's handsome, Uncle Mort. And a new necktie. Yep, water commissioner necktie. Hand-painted picture in Niagara Falls. <laughs> Wait, is that a spot on there? No, I asked the clerk about that. It's a man going over the falls in a barrel. <laughs> You look fine, Anki. Uh, thank you, my dear. Say, where is everybody? Well, Bronco's working later tonight, so we can go to the fair tomorrow. Good boy. And Bertie's down in the kitchen, and Leroy's in the living room practicing on the piano. Well, fine. I guess I'll get down and give the boy a little encouragement. You'll just leave. You've got this household running like clockwork. <laughs> practice the rottener I get. If I keep this up, it's going to be murder. Leroy? Okay. Oh, phooey. It's all right, my boy. All right, just keep it up. I've been upstairs listening. You're doing fine. Are you kidding? Just keep at it, Leroy. Practice makes perfect, you know. Gee, Uncle, do I have to practice now? All the other kids are out at the fairground. They're putting up the midway. I'll practice twice as long tomorrow, couldn't I, Unc? No, my boy, I know it's a big temptation to run out to the fairgrounds. But duty comes first. Do your work, and then play afterwards. Gee whiz, all the other people are out having fun, and I've got to sit here and practice. It's lonely. Leroy, when a person plays the piano, he can never be lonely. The way I play it, he can. <laughs> Well, you have to keep at it. Okay. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, Bronco, finally finished your work, huh? Yes, sir. You know, Mr. Gildersleeve, when a man's going to be a father, he really has to pitch. Yeah, that's right. Marge and I are going to have a little bird in our nest. Who's going to pitch and where's the bird? Never mind. <laughs> Oh, Bronco, baby. Oh, Marge, darling. 
Cute kids. <laughs> hey, uh, Marge, Mr. Gildersleeve, look what I bought downtown. It's a wonderful book. A book? Well, good. Oh, this is no ordinary book, Mr. Gildersleeve. This is about babies. It tells what to do with them. Oh, let's see it, Bronco. Hey, say, a cute picture in the cover. A stork carrying a baby in a tablecloth. What's going on? <laughs> now, Leroy, stay with your practicing. Holy cow, I don't get in on anything. Who got the bird? Somebody call Birdie? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Birdie, Bronco found a baby book. It'll tell us exactly what to do. Ain't that nice? Leroy? Huh? You're practicing. Okay. Uh, George, you're going to finish that lesson if I have to nail your trousers to the piano stool. Uncle Mort, here's something interesting. Oh? Here in the back of the book, Behavior of Older Children. It says, do not force the child to obey. Seek his cooperation by being a partner. Join in his activity. Well, that's right. Good advice. In cases in which the child finds an activity difficult or uninteresting, the parent should become a partner so that the parent and child work and learn side by side. Yes, indeed. You want to remember that, Marjorie. Leroy sure having a bad time with them piano lessons. You see, Yankee, the reason Leroy doesn't like to practice his piano is that he's alone. The book is absolutely right. Marjorie, what are you leading up to? Well, I think what she means, Mr. Gildersleeve, is that you and Leroy should be partners in the piano. Partners in the piano. <laughs> well, it's never too late to learn, Unky. That's right, Mr. Gildersleeve. My grandfather learned to play the bass clarinet when he was 74. Yeah, I know, but... Leroy wouldn't mind practicing his hour a day if he knew you were doing it too, would he, Bertie? I think Leroy would be tickled to death, but I can't see the two of them on that piano stool. <laughs> Somebody's going to be sitting on thin air. <laughs> well, they wouldn't practice at the same time. Now, well, Marjorie, you're being carried away with an idea. It wouldn't make a bit of difference to Leroy if I practiced the lessons with him. Not a bit. All right, ask him. Well, uh, Leroy? Okay, I'm practicing. No, no, come here. What you want? Leroy, uh, how would you, uh, I mean, uh, you wouldn't like your piano lessons any better. I mean, it wouldn't be any easier if I practiced along with you, would it? You won't practicing? It's ridiculous, isn't it? I think it's a keen idea. <laughs> you do. We'll start tonight, Unc. I'll practice an hour and then you practice an hour, okay? Well. Oh, boy, wait till they hear us play, Unc. It'll be you and me against the world. Ha, <laughs> ha, uh ha. -huh. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do for you this evening? Uh, give me a box of those chocolates there, Pete. Mm, very well. Are they fresh? Well, yes. They're fine. Just give them to me, P.V. I'm in a big hurry. Well, give me a chance to dust it off. Uh, the box doesn't look very fresh to me. Well, you don't have to eat the box. Just eat what's inside. <laughs> All right, P.V. Now, it'll be one dollar and three cents for the governor. There you are, P.V. Thank you. Taking the candy with you to the fair tomorrow, I presume? No, Petey. The candy's for the girl I'm taking to the fair tomorrow. <laughs> I haven't time to talk now. I've been away from the house for over an hour. I still have to go to Katie Milford's. <laughs> Leroy will be looking for me. Oh, by the way, Leroy was in here a while ago. He asked if you'd been in. Uh-oh. Said you were practicing his music with him. Now, Peavy, this is just a silly idea of Marjorie's. I had nothing to do with it. For goodness sakes, don't tell anybody. I'll be the laughing stock of the town. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. You what? Oh, I think it's a very commendable thing. You do? Really? And Leroy said some rather complimentary things about you. He did? Well, I hadn't thought of it that way. Of course, if you'd rather I didn't mention it to anybody. Good I... evening, Gildy. Peavy. Hello, Judge. Good evening, Judge. Well, Judge, I suppose you've heard the news. What news? Well, little Leroy's been having such a hard time practicing his piano lessons that I decided to join right in with him. We're taking up the piano together. Don't tell anybody, he said. Why, Gilda, you mean you're practicing his little pieces right along with him? Yes, indeed. An hour a day. Windbag. Well, that's the nicest thing I ever heard. Yeah. Leroy said you were supposed to come home. The piano is waiting. <laughs> All right, Petey. <laughs> 
And I suppose that tomorrow, when you and Leroy have finished your stint at the keyboard, you'll be off arm in arm to the fair. Well, not exactly, Judge. I'm planning to take Katie Milford. Oh, your little nurse. Yeah. In fact, I'm on my way to her house right now. Yeah, I see you have a large box of candy. Need any help carrying it? <laughs> no, thanks, Judge. My hands need the exercise. Got to limber up for the piano. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, Gildy, let me say I'm extremely proud of you for what you're doing. Uh, thank you, Judge. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, for what is it, Beatty? If you don't move, you're going to be the hottest piano player in town. What? You're leaning up against the cigar lighter. Oh! <laughs> Katie's house. It's been a long time since I've seen her. I wonder if she's missed me. Sure she has. How could she help it? Uh, 9.30, Gildersleeve. You better shake a leg. Ah, I'll stand under the porch light so it catches my profile from the top like they do in the movies. I wonder if she's changed. Katie, beautiful Katie. Who's there? Three guesses. Well, Throckmorton, it's you. Yep, it's me. I don't know if I should ask you in or not. Huh? You've been away a long, long time. But, Catherine, I've been busy. Besides, you know what they say about absence. Makes the heart grow fonder. Let me come in. Just for a little while. Oh, Throckmorton, you naughty boy. I can't say no to you. By George, he has changed. <laughs> Didn't have any trouble saying no to me before. Come on in, but just for a minute. Oh, thank you. She's prettier, too. Gorgeous. I wonder what she did last summer. <sighs> Let me look at you, Throckmorton. I'd almost forgotten how big and handsome you are. You have? Let me unbutton your coat. Oh, brother. <laughs> Perfume in her hair. Makes me dizzy. Now come and sit here beside me on the couch. Love to. <laughs> it's been such a long time. That's a lovely suit you're wearing. Yep. Yeah, brand new. Herringbone. Oh. Talk to me, Throckmorton. Well, when I stopped by to ask you, Catherine, I, I wondered if you'd like to go to the fair with me tomorrow, opening day. No, I don't think I should. Well, Catherine, I was counting on it. I even brought you some candy. Oh, thank you. They're good. Chocolate-covered filberts. But I don't think I'll go to the fair with you tomorrow. Please, Catherine. No, I don't think so. Pretty please? No. I haven't heard from you in months. You came back from your vacation. You didn't even call me. Well, I have had lots of work at the office. And I'm helping Leroy with his piano lessons. You're doing what? What, poor little fellow, practicing at that piano all alone. I simply decided he needed somebody to do it with him. Throckmorton, you mean you're doing that for Leroy? He and I practice an hour every day. Well, you angel. How long have you been doing this? Uh, starting tonight. <laughs> That's such a sweet thing to do. Yeah. Do you still want Katie to go to the fair with you tomorrow? Sure I do. Throckmorton, when a man is kind enough to help a little boy, it's the least I can do. Great. Gildersleeve stopped shaking. <laughs> Hadn't you better go home now, Throckmorton? Oh, but I just got here. But don't you have to practice? No, I'll do it tomorrow. I got a little practicing to do right here. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve returns in just a moment. It's fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. Fresh. That's why it tastes so good. It's parquet margarine made by Kraft. 
Every woman knows that only a really fresh margarine is really good. And that's why so many women always buy parquet margarine, made by Kraft. For the freshness of parquet margarine is protected right to your table by Kraft Freshness Control. Parquet is blended fresh from top-grade products of American farms. It's rushed fresh to your store in refrigerated trucks, kept fresh by your grocer. Every pound of parquet margarine on sale anywhere is flavor-dated and is checked regularly by Kraft men. That's why Kraft can positively guarantee to you that any parquet you buy anywhere will be fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. Fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. Where state laws permit, get yellow parquet already colored and ready to serve in its new flavor saver aluminum foil wrap. Elsewhere, get parquet in the handy color quick bag or regular package. County Fair opens today in Summerfield. It's a beautiful morning, and everybody at the great Gildersleeve's house is busy getting ready for the big day. But the great man himself is way ahead of them. He's at the fair already, and he isn't even out of bed. shaking the bed. Well, it's me, Anki. Breakfast's ready. Everybody's up but you. They are? <laughs> Must have been dreaming. Nice. Oh, Leroy's already practiced his hour for today. You didn't practice yours last night. Well, I got tied up. Oh, I'll do it this morning. Well, why don't you practice an hour before breakfast and an hour after breakfast? That'll catch you up for last night, and you'll be all through for today. No, I think I'll put in two hours after breakfast. I don't think I could hit an E-flat on an empty stomach. Good breakfast, Bertie. Well, I'm fine, Mr. Gill, please. Land is so much hurrying around here getting ready for the fair, I don't know which way is up. Well, everybody's busy today, but... Yes, sir, that little Leroy sure is. He's been practicing this morning like a little angel ever since you told him you was going to do it with him. Well, it's my duty, Bertie. Help the boy with his little problems. Yes, sir. Leroy has to learn that when you have a job to do, you do it before you do anything else. Yes, sir. Learning the value of responsibility. That's important. Yes, sir. That's how I got to be water commissioner. Yes, sir. Uh, you going to practice the piano this morning, Mr. Gilsley? Certainly, Bertie. Two hours. As soon as I take a look at the morning paper. Anki, it's ten o'clock. Are you going to fair? Yes, indeed. I'm taking Miss Milford. Well, you better hurry if you're going to practice two hours. All right, my dear. I'm not putting it off. Just want to glance at the paper. Hey, Anki, I'm done with practicing. Well, good. When are you going to start? Right away, my boy. Just want to look at the comics. Come on, I'll do your work first and play afterwards. That's what you tell me. All right, be right there. Unc! All right, all right, I'm coming. So is Christmas. That's what you tell me. I'm coming right now. You're not moving. Leroy. <laughs> Please. Well? All right, all right, let's go. Where's the piano? Same place it's always been. Sure, sure. Same piano. Okay, there you are. Now, here are the teacher's instructions, and here's the piece we're practicing. Oh, what's the piece called? The Happy Farmer. Oh, brother. Yeah, let me get the bench over here, huh? Gee, this is keen, you and me beating the piano together, huh? Yeah, keen. Here's the clock on the table. You can see when you've practiced two hours. All right, Leroy. Now run along. 
I'll watch you. You don't have to watch me. I'll do it. And the piece starts right here at the top of the page. Yeah, I know that, Leroy. You're the happy farmer. That's right. Now, C sharp. Leroy. Well, somebody at the door. I'll get it. Yeah, I'll get it, Bertie. I'll get it. I'm right here. You're supposed to be practicing. Yeah, I will, Leroy. Let me answer the door. Don't be so crabby. Well, good morning, Gilda. Well, Horace, glad to see you. Come in and sit down. What a slippery character. <laughs> I was just going by on the way to the fair, Gilda. I wondered if you and Miss Milford would like to ride with me in my new car. Say, that's a wonderful idea, Judge. I'll get my hat and we'll drive by Catherine's house. Unc! What? Remember? The happy farmer? Oh, him. Uh, sorry, Judge. You'd better go along. I have to practice. Oh, what a shame. And I have my top down. It's a convertible, you know. We might drive around the block. Unc! Leroy, it'll only take a minute. Do your work first, Unc. Don't put it off. Over. Leroy's right, Gildy. But at least you can come out to the car and see my prize pumpkin that I'm taking to the fair. Judge, you mean you have a pumpkin? Oh, I've got to see that. <laughs> Go on, Judge. Be right back, Leroy. Was I ever like this? <laughs> A beautiful pumpkin, Judge. Raise it yourself, huh? Oh, yes, Gilda. Right in my own backyard. Hurry on! All right, Leroy, I'll be right there. That's what you said a half hour ago. Maybe you had better go, Gilda. Relax, Judge. He'll forget it. Plenty of time. Hey, Unc! Be there in a minute, Leroy. Gildy, don't you think you better go in? It's getting late. No. Let's talk some more, Judge. Oh, I can't think of anything else to talk about. Well... And I must be running along, Gildy. They'll be opening the fairgrounds in ten minutes. I want to avoid the crowd. Don't want anybody to jostle my pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, all right, George. I'll be leaving in a few minutes, too. Got to pick up Catherine. See you at the fair, Gildy. Goodbye, Judge. Look, no ship. Guess I shouldn't have stayed out there so long. Now, if I can just get past Leroy. Don't see him. Sure. He's probably forgotten all about me. Hey, I... Oh! <laughs> Leroy! Where are you going? Well, it's pretty late now, Leroy. Catherine's waiting for me. I practiced an hour last night and an hour this morning. Well, I'm going to do it, too. Later. I'll do it tonight. I'll practice three hours tonight. Okay, Uncle. Sure. Can't miss the fair, my boy. Okay. You understand, don't you? Sure, I understand. We're going, Uncle. See you at the fair. Yeah, I'll see you at the fair, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, goodbye. Leroy, I don't want you to think I'm going back on a promise. No, it's all right. I'm leaving for the fair, Miss Gildersleeve. All right, Bertie. Gee, poor Uncle. You go ahead. You don't have to practice. Really? No. By George, I can't do it. I made a promise. Wouldn't have any fun at the fair if I did go. You run along, my boy. Have a good time. Aren't you going? No, I'll stay here. But how about Miss Milford? Well, on your way, stop by her house. Tell her I couldn't make it. Tell her... Tell her I had to work. <laughs> farmer. <laughs> Gildas Lee, quit feeling sorry for yourself. It's your own fault. Everybody else is at the fair, having fun. Now I know how Leroy feels, all alone at the piano. Katie, you'll never speak to me again. 
You wonder what Katie's doing. Hello, Throckmorton. Who? Catherine. How'd you get in here? I saw you through the window and slipped in. Why did you go to the fair? Oh, I couldn't, Throckmorton. Not after I found out what had happened. What do you mean? Leroy told me why you didn't come. He did? Mm Mm-hmm. I admire you. Well. (laughs) Move over a little. Ah. What are you going to do? Sit down here beside you. You know, Throckmorton, it's so much easier to practice when you have somebody to do it with you. Oh, what a girl. This is better than going to the fair. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Whenever you shop, remember the margarine that tastes so good because it's fresh, really fresh, always fresh, is parquet margarine made by Kraft. In states where colored margarine is sold, get yellow parquet in its new flavor saver aluminum foil wrap. Elsewhere, get parquet in the color quick bag or regular package. In any package, parquet is the margarine that's always good because it's always fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. Morton. Sure. Fair's just as good at night. An awful lot of it, though. I'm getting tired, are you, Catherine? Oh, no. Shall we go through the agricultural exhibit? No, I've seen the judge's pumpkin. Doc Morton, are you having a good time? Me? Well... What would you like to do? You really want to know? Mm-hmm. Let's go home and do some more practicing. <laughs> Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Kathy Lewis, Dick Prenna, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. And also for a half hour of spine-tingling excitement, listen next Sunday afternoon to The Falcon over this station. Next Sunday, The Falcon will keep you on the edge of your chair every minute as he solves the case of the talented twins. Be sure to hear The Falcon next Sunday afternoon. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast. There's magic in mustard. Yes, when you want to put new taste excitement into almost anything, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors pop right out. Every bite tastes better. Particularly if the mustard you use is Kraft prepared mustard. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Kraft salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer mustard mild, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Get both kinds. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Kraft prepared mustard. Groucho Marx follows Gildersleeve next week on...